Welcome back to the channel boys, Fablinski's coming at your neck with this Whisper of Chains build. Now with this build, we're going to focus on becoming as tanky as possible, and when I say that, I mean we're going to be super tanky boys. We're using 100 resilience, we're using Whisper of Chains, and we're using a couple of Charger Light mods, so let's go ahead and break it down. So obviously we are on the Behemoth Titan, now it's very important that you do use Glacier Grenades. We're using Howl of the Storm. These two are very important because you need to have as many stasis crystals or ice crystals around as possible. Now you can change this out for Cryoclasm if you want that one, but I like using Tectonic Harvest personally. It allows me to get my melee back. Actually, I think that this is what I would recommend anyway, because whenever you do break the crystals, you want to be able to get your melee back and spawn more crystals as much as possible. So I recommend using Tectonic Harvest. And our fragments are as followed. Now you got Whisper of Torment, which every time you take damage, you get grenade energy, very important. So you're going to want to have this one. This is another one, Whisper of Hedrons. This is kind of flexible if you don't want the weapon damage buff, you can switch it out for something else. You can probably put Whisper of Durance here, but I just like getting extra weapon damage buff. That's just me, so you can switch it out if you want to. Now this is the main one right here, Whisper of Chains. While you are near frozen targets or friendly stasis crystals, you take reduced damage from targets plus 10 recovery. Now this is the build, this is what we're focusing on with this build. Now whenever you are near any stasis crystals, frozen targets, you take a massive damage reduction, which is why I said you want to have the Glacier Grenades and how the Storm, and you want to be able to use your melee as much as possible as well as your grenade. So anything that will get you that, you want to use because, like I said, we're going to become very tanky with this build. And then we got Whisper of Fractures, and when your melee, your melee recharges faster when you are near two or more frozen, or sorry, not even frozen, just two or more combatants. I think it kind of like chunks up very slowly, but still, when you're in the fray, you're near a bunch of enemies, you're getting your melee back, which means you're able to spawn more stasis crystals more frequently, which makes this more tanky. As for my loadout, we're using my Friction Fire again. I've been having a blast with this weapon. I think this thing is phenomenal. We got Threat Detector Wellspring. I love this roll. And then we got my first and last stat. We got auto link demo this time. I can also swap to Vorpal if I really need to. But I feel like demolition is good. Or, I mean, honestly, you can use either one. I just like having demolitions on a gun. And then we got Cold Duello. We got auto loading cluster bomb. As for my stats, we got 26 mobility. Now we got 101 resilience. It means my barricade is on a 14 second cooldown. Very important for this build because we are using Heart of Inmost Light. So we want to take advantage of that empowering buff to get my abilities back faster. So we're going to use that by spamming our barricade, 14 second cooldown. Now we got 56 recovery, 52 discipline, pretty good stats right here, 29 intellect and 35 strength. This doesn't matter because we have ways to negate that and make that much higher or get our melee back much quicker than it says. So let's go ahead and start with our helmet. We got a minor discipline mod. Then we got rocket launcher ammo finder and shotgun ammo finder. Now this allows for some flexibility. If you want to run a sniper, you can just swap it out, a sword, whatever you want to do, or double rocket finders. You can use whatever you want, which is why I like having this setup right here. And then we got taking charge, become charge of light by picking up an orb of power. Now on my gauntlets, we got a minor resilience mod. We got SMG loader, and then we got impact induction. Causing damage with a melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. And this does work with the how the storm slide and raise up the crystals thing. If you're able to kill or even just do a little bit of damage with that, you get a nice chunk of grenade energy back, which will allow you to keep spawning more stasis crystals. And then we got supercharged. Now we're up to four stacks of charger light. And onto my exotic piece of choice, we're using Heart of Vinmos Light. Now the armor perk that comes on it is Overflowing Light. Using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade empowers the other two abilities. Empowered abilities means they have faster regen, melees, and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. Now we're mainly using this so that way we're going to start this build off with our barricade. We pop our barricade, we empower the other two abilities, use my melee, it does a lot more damage, use a grenade, free some enemies, get my abilities back faster. That's the main reason why we're using this. I'm trying to spam the stasis crystals. And we got minor resilience mod as well. We got concussive dampener. Sniper damage resist, and then we got swift charge, become charge of light by rapidly defeating combatants with pulse rifles, sidearms, or SMGs. Now again, we're using my friction fire, so if I get multiple kills with that very quickly, it's also master work. So I get multiple kills, spawn orbs of power, become charge of light very frequently with this build. On my legs, we got another resilience mod. Now we got better already. I feel like this mod is very slept on because whenever you pick up an orb of power, you immediately start to regenerate your health, which is very valuable, especially in something like a nightfall where, you know, stakes are very high, enemies do a lot of damage. You may be waiting on your health, you pick up an orb of power, boom, you start to regenerate your health. Or something like the battlegrounds where very chaotic there's a lot of orbs everywhere if you're taking damage you just pick up an orb and start to regenerate your health we're also using absolution reduce all ability cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power another very good mod and then our made charge of light mod is protective light 
while charged with light you gain a significant damage resistance against combatants when your shields are destroyed this effect consumes all stacks of charged light the more stacks consumed the longer the damage resist lasts it does take away 10 from my strength but that's okay because i have the uh tectonic harvest which means i'm gonna get my melee back whenever i pick up the little bit of the stasis crystals now this is what is allowing us to become extra tanky because when my health gets really low i get the damage resist and it stacks with the other damage resist from whisper of chains so when my health is low i get a nice damage resist i can take a lot of damage and hopefully I just kill the enemies or maybe I can get away from cut to cover or something like that but this mod is what makes us extremely tanky and I have five stacks you're gonna see in a second I have charged up so with five stacks and protective light that buff lasts like 18 seconds if not 20 seconds so you get like let's just say 18 because I'm not sure 18 seconds of a crazy damage resist once my health does come back I'm pretty much just walking around like an like an actual tank and it's amazing and onto my Titan mark we got another resilience mod we got double bomber mod so whenever I do pop my barricade I get a nice chunk of grenade energy you can even swap this out for melee if you don't really care about having charged up or if you're able to fit it somewhere else so that way you can do outreach and get your melee back faster but for right now I need this to be sold or four charged up which is why we have the double bomber mods and then we got charged up allows for one additional stack of charge with light now this is how i'm able to get five stacks of charge with light and make my protective light that much better and boys i just want to know who you call him pinhead now we went with the pinhead look if you guys can tell i'm patrick star i'm literally patrick star look i'm all pink i got my green shorts or well, i'm trying to make it my green shorts right here i'm pinhead i'm pinhead larry i don't care what anybody says this is a funny this is a very funny look <laughs> i like it just because it's funny but if it's nice no i think it's stupid looking but it's hilarious and i'm pinhead so let me know what you guys think shaves will be in the description below after using this build for a while and playing with it and doing multiple different activities i realized that no other build has made me felt this tanky i mean maybe bubble titan with like energy converter helm of save 14 but even then it's only when i have my bubble available because then i can keep getting to overshield with this build, as long as their stasis crystals up, I'm tanky as well as long as I'm near them too, but I'm tanky as long as your stasis crystals around. So whenever I use the Howl of the Storm slide thing, whenever I use glacier grenades, and get this, whenever I use my super and just spam stasis crystals, I would just spawn some stasis crystals near where I'm gonna fight and just fight in between them, go around them, whatever, and enemies start to push me, boom, I can just blow up the stasis crystals, cause damage to them, or slide, freeze those enemies, get that weapon damage buff. As long as I'm taking damage, I'm getting my grenade back if i'm near two or more enemies i get my melee back i can just keep that cycle going i pop my barricade empower my abilities and this build is so much fun because you can take so much damage and then once protective light goes boom you get that damage buff as well so it's crazy you will actually feel like a walking tank with this build and i feel like that's what titans are maybe not that's that's not what they're supposed to do but they have more i guess tanking capabilities than other classes like you get the barricade and stuff so using this build just adds to that power fantasy of you are the tank of your team, you're the backbone, you are keeps everybody alive, which is another thing that I want to mention. If your team is also using Whisper of Chains and they're near all your stasis crystals, they also get a damage resistance buff. So you might want to mention that to them, tell them to throw in Whisper of Chains, you just keep spawning your stasis crystals, you get your damage resist, and then they're getting their damage resist, you're making everybody tanky, you keep popping your barricade, you provide cover for your team, and I love it. This is the first time with stasis that you almost want to play defensively with your ability right your abilities aren't necessarily meant to freeze them this time you're not throwing the glacier grenades you're not blowing them up or at least not trying to blow them up you're not using your melee although i do use my melee in an offensive way but realistically you want to throw your melee like behind you or near where you're gonna fight stand there give yourself some cover and get that damage resist and just go to town use your wellspring weapon or your demolitionist weapon whatever you want to use i recommend wellspring and demolitionist get your abilities back push forward with the stasis crystals throw your grenade out run to your grenade fight around your grenade use that as cover pop your barricade you really want to play defensively with this build because they're going to take advantage of the damage resistance buff get protective light proc that once your health gets low get more tanky get your abilities back and just keep that cycle going you are the tank of your team you're like ryan hart from overwatch or you're just any other tank in the game or in any other game you are the tank now i did also try this build out with monte carlo and then the first and last i was demolitionist and i honestly would recommend using the threat detector wellspring or any type of wellspring weapon because with wellspring it works for all your abilities not just your melee 
Although Monte Carlo is a fantastic gun and I felt like I was able to just kill everything because if I froze him, I get that damage buff. Monte Carlo itself has a really nice damage buff when you get those kills chained together. So you're able to just like, clear a bunch of ads and Monte Carlo is one of my favorite guns too. I love that gun, but I feel like with this build, I, will, I want to be able to spam all my abilities. So, I mean, it was still fun, it was still good, but I personally just thought it was more fun using the Threat Detector Wellspring weapon. So definitely try this build out, boys. I honestly think that this build might be even viable for end game content because if your team's all running stasis you can be the backbone giving your team damage resistance buff freezing enemies that are coming near you giving their melee back and you guys can just tank so much damage and you can revive people provide cover so i don't know i'm gonna take this into some nightfalls maybe maybe even gms who knows i don't know i feel like then you really want to use pure defense but I don't know, I'm gonna try it and see what happens once GM's unlocked. But you guys definitely gotta try this build out and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But if you guys like this content, please like, subscribe, and share. It truly helps me out a lot. You can also check out my other videos, links are in the description below. I have a lot of crazy builds, so go ahead and check that out. And you might as well find my social media. I have a Twitter and an Instagram, both at fat underscore But with all that being said, deuces.